What is dividend reinvestment and how can you use it to grow your dough? In this video, I'll explain dividend reinvestment plans, how to set one up and two strategies to make your dividends grow faster. We're talking reinvesting dividends today on Let's Talk Money. Beat the make money, make your money work for creating you. the financial future you deserve. Let's talk money. Hey, Bowtie Nation, Joseph Hogue with the Let's Talk Money channel here on YouTube. I want to send a special shout out to everyone in the nation. Thank you for spending a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. Now, those of you in the nation know I love dividend stocks. Seeing those dividend checks hit your account, it just feels like you're doing everything right and reinvesting those dividends is the best way to grow your portfolio. But there is a lot more to dividend reinvestment than just putting your money back to work. It's not only about finding the right dividend reinvestment plans, but, but understanding how taxes work on those cash payments and, and how to make your dividends work harder. So I'm going to use this video as a complete guide to dividend reinvestments. Uh, I'll explain the drips, the, so those dividend reinvestment plans, and, and show you how to set those up even if a company doesn't have a formal plan. I'm then going to show you two ways dividends are taxed and, and how to make sure you get the most from your money. I'm then going to reveal two dividend reinvesting strategies, two strategies that go beyond simple reinvesting to make sure you get as much money as possible. Now I'll be sharing those towards the end of the video, so make sure you stick around for that. Now there are two types of dividend reinvestment that we're going to talk about today. The first is kind of a formal dividend reinvestment plan, also called a drip. Uh, these are set up by a dividend paying company as directly and allows investors to reinvest dividends directly back into that company to buy more shares. Now I'm also going to show you how to create your own dividend reinvestment plan on your own, including how to set these up even if a company doesn't offer it. So I'll show you how to set up that dividend reinvestment plan next, but, but first the question of whether you should just reinvest your dividends or not. Now, I reinvest every penny I receive, but there might be instances where you don't want to do that. Uh, for example, if you need the cash flow to pay for living expenses, dividends can be a great source so you don't have to sell out of your stocks. Now, depending on how much dividends you receive, how, many, how much you collect each month, you might be able to live on just that alone. You also might not want to reinvest your dividends if you're unsure about where the stock market is heading. Uh, maybe stocks are looking a little expensive right now, so, so you want to keep that money in cash or invest it in the safer bonds. It's kind of ironic that people complain all the time about companies buying back shares when, when the prices are high, basically using that company cash to reinvest in their shares, but those same investors think nothing of plowing their own dividends back into those same shares. Now normally I would say for most investors, I'd say definitely reinvest your dividends. This doesn't mean you have to reinvest all that money back into the same company and we'll get into a few strategies you can use here. But just generally reinvesting your money is going to grow your portfolio faster from those compounding returns. Now we'll get to setting up the dividend reinvestment plan uh, and those dividend reinvesting strategies. But first I want to get your feedback on this. Do you reinvest all your dividends and how do you decide where to reinvest your money? Do you reinvest in the same company every time you receive a dividend uh, across your portfolio or how do you make that decision? So scroll down and let me know in the comments below, how do you make that reinvestment decision? Now there are three ways really that you can reinvest your dividends. I'm going to show you how to set each one of these up one by one and then I'm going to go over the pros and cons of each. Now the old school way of getting into a dividend reinvestment plan used to be directly through a company. Uh, so if you wanted to reinvest some of those sweet 3% dividends from Coca-Cola, you'd go directly to the website and then look for its drip program. Here we see that Coca-Cola manages its direct stock program through a site called Computer Shares, which happens to manage a lot of other companies' programs. You can scroll down here to see some of these other companies available or, or just click through to Coca-Cola to see their plan details, fees, and, and all this other information. So here you're investing directly into shares of Coca-Cola through its company. Now Computer Shares just manages the program. Every time you get a dividend from the company, from Coca-Cola, it's going to be reinvested in more of that stock. Now pros of these direct drip programs are, are that some companies actually offer a discount on their shares. The fees are usually pretty low and you can usually buy fractional shares. So if you receive a $5 dividend but shares are $50 each, then the program is going to reinvest your money into a partial share instead of making you wait for it to buy a whole share. Of course, the downside to these programs is, is that you might have shares in 10 different companies all on different websites and, and that can be a big pain to keep track of. Now, the second way to reinvest your dividends is going to be to go through an online investing site. Uh, most of these are set up the same, but I'll show you how to do it on my E-Trade account. So I'll go to the dividend reinvestment page here in the menu or I can do a search for dividend investment in the search box. There's a drop down here for each account, so make sure that you do this for each investment account you have on, on a platform. 
I can enroll the entire account to reinvest dividends, or I can choose only the, to reinvest the dividends in specific stocks. So down here, it lists each dividend stock I have in the account. This is my traditional IRA that I have on the site uh, where I hold a lot of the REITs that I own. And I can see the dividend yield amount as well as the next X dividend date and the payment date. Here, if I click on this box next to one of these, I can enroll in just that stock to reinvest the dividends automatically. I can do that for any of these stocks in each of my accounts here. So, so you see I've got three accounts, a regular taxable account, a traditional IRA, and then a self-employed IRA. Now the upside to this method is that it makes keeping track of your dividends so much easier. You can keep all your investments in one place, one platform, and then decide which stocks you want to enroll in your dividend investment plans. You get one 1099 DIV tax form. That's the form that you receive each year on your investments. You get that one from a one site instead of each company you get dividends from. Now the downside to this is that you can only reinvest dividends from a company into the shares of that same company. To solve this problem though, I've got a third reinvestment method that you've got to check out. Now I originally started investing on M1 Finance for our 2019 stock market dividend challenge portfolio. Uh, this was when most platforms charged a commission to buy stocks, so I loved M1 for that no fee model. Now that E-Trade and most of these other sites have switched to no commissions, it's not as much of an advantage, but I still love the platform for one very important reason. So M1 Finance will allow you to automatically reinvest your dividends and any cash back into your entire portfolio. All you do is click on that auto invest link up here and it's gonna give you three options for your cash balance control. Now you can tell the platform that whenever your account reaches $10 in uninvested cash, you wanna automatically reinvest it across the whole portfolio. Uh, you toggle the second one here to tell the platform when to reinvest or, or you can turn off the auto invest feature. Well, what this is gonna do, instead of just reinvesting your money directly into that same dividend paying stock, it's gonna split your money up and reinvest across all the stocks in your portfolio. So when you set up your account, you tell M1 what percentage of your money you want in each of these stocks, and that's what it's going to do to reinvest your cash. The advantage here is that you keep a more diversified portfolio. You're not just reinvesting in one stock, but spreading your money across all the stocks you own. Now, M1 also allows that fractional share investing, so you get a portion of your shares even if you're not investing enough in, in each stock for a full share. The downside is that maybe you want to reinvest your money back into that one single stock. Maybe you don't want to reinvest across all the stocks in your portfolio. Of course, this is pretty easy to do by just turning off that auto invest feature and just doing the reinvesting yourself. Now I want to get to how dividend reinvestment is taxed, but I'm going to leave a link to M1 Finance in the video description below. Make sure you check that out. So taxes on dividends are really confusing. Uh, first of all, you owe taxes on any dividend you collect each year. Now this is whether you reinvest those dividends or not. If you receive $50 in dividends and reinvest those, you'll just need to pay those taxes out of your pocket come April. Now how dividends are taxed and the rate that you pay is the confusing part. Any dividends you receive are, are gonna be marked as either qualified or non-qualified on the tax form you receive. That's that 1099 DIV. Qualified dividends are those you receive on, on stocks that you've held more than 60 days during a 121 day period that begins 60 days before the ex-dividend date. Now all these numbers is what can be really confusing, but this is important because it determines the tax rate that you're gonna pay. Remember the ex-dividend date is the first day that the stock trades without the dividend. So you have to own the shares before that to get those payments anyway. Now the IRS says that to get that preferred tax rate on the dividends, you have to own the shares for at least 60 days around that day. It can be some before, some after, any 60 days around that ex-dividend date. Now any dividends you receive on a stock that you don't own for at least that 60 day period are, are marked as non-qualified dividends, or, or sometimes these are just called ordinary dividends. Now this is important because those qualified dividends are taxed under your capital gains rate, and that's usually lower than your income tax rate. On the other hand, those ordinary or those non-qualified dividends, those are taxed as ordinary income. You see the difference here in federal tax brackets for single and joint filers. So those qualified dividends are just taxed as capital gains. And if you make, for example, here less than 39,375 and file separately, you don't pay any taxes on these types of gains. This leaves a big question mark in your dividend investing strategy because if you're not a buy and hold investor and you're selling those dividend stocks in less than 60 days, you could be on the hook for a bigger tax bill. So let's just look at a couple of examples here because I want you to understand this and what it means for your investments. So now let's say that you file taxes with your spouse and make $70,000 a year. So we're looking at the second row under 2019 joint filer tax brackets. If you own a dividend stock for less than 60 days and collect that payment, you're gonna owe 12% in taxes. 
If you held the stock for that 60 day period or longer for it to be a qualified dividend, you're gonna owe nothing on that. One more example here. If you file your taxes individually and make $80,000 a year, so if you own a dividend stock for less than that 60 day period and collect the dividend, you'll pay a 22% tax rate on that payment. If on the other hand, you hold the shares long enough, uh, your tax rate falls to 15% on those dividends. This is important stuff here, okay? Your online broker is gonna send you that 1099 DIV form, and this is gonna show you the dividends you collected both as qualified and non-qualified dividends. That's what you're gonna report on your taxes, and the difference here could mean thousands of dollars. Now I wanna to get to those two strategies for dividend reinvestment. We'll talk about how much to reinvest and how to determine where you put your money. So our first strategy here is gonna be following a calendar dividend strategy. And this is something that I talked about in a previous video, but I like to sweeten it here with something I call the calendar growth strategy. Now, if you remember that dividend calendar strategy, uh, basically you're looking online for stocks with an ex-dividend date coming up. As long as you buy the shares before that ex-dividend date, so before that date, you get the dividend. Why I call this the calendar growth strategy though is you can sell those shares anytime on or after the ex-dividend date and you reinvest in another stock. You take all the money from the sale of that stock plus the dividend you collected and then reinvest it into another stock with a dividend payment coming up. You can keep doing this, reinvesting your profits into that next stock and just watch your money grow exponentially. Now the next strategy here is gonna be looking for companies that offer a discount on their dividend reinvestment plans. So there's currently only two of these but more are popping up all the time. One is Aqua America, ticker WTR, and then Franco Nevada, ticker FNV. But these companies will give you a discount on the share price to invest directly in the company and then reinvest your dividends. For example, you get a 5% discount on the share price when you invest in Aqua America through its direct stock program, and then the shares pay a 2.4% yield every year. Even if the share price goes nowhere for that whole year, you've still made a 7.7% return on the discount and the dividend. Click on the video to the right here for five dividend stocks that will never let you down. Five stocks with proven cash flows in good times and in bad that will guarantee you that dividend payment. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.